Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. And if this is not your first visit, welcome back. Today I am sharing another block in our Oh Happy Day sampler sew along. This is block four and we are making the best loved block. You can see the best loved quilt hanging here behind me. And I just love this palette for fall. These are fabrics from Basic Gray, a lot of grunge fabrics, and then some print fabrics mixed in there as well. And I think the palette is just perfect for this time of year. I just love a warm, cozy quilt. And I always love the warm shades of fabrics. And that is just so perfect for fall. This is the best loved pillow also made using quite a bit of basic gray fabrics. This taupey gray print is from a basic gray line. And then the cream fabric in the pillow is from my apricot and ash line. And this is just a simple quilt. Um, you can see how it might look as a pillow or as a quilt. But let's talk about the fabrics that we're going to need to make our block for today. On my table in front of me, I have all of my pieces cut out. If you turn to page 19 in your Oh Happy Day book, you're going to see listed the pieces that you need to cut. Underneath of gray print, you need four pieces, four rectangular shaped pieces. That's these right here. And then you're going to see that you need two medium sized squares cut diagonally once. I am using my white on white background print in place of that gray. So let me pull the pillow back over here. In the pillow project, that would be this section right here and right over here. So I am framing those out with a background print. So I'm going to be focusing on the center by using background fabric for those corners. So I have cut those. And then if you continue reading on page 19, you will also need some pieces cut from a cream print. You need four small squares and one medium square. Those are all the pieces that we're going to need for today's block. This one is going to come together so quickly. Let me show you what we're going to do first. So we are going to be making an uneven nine patch. And let me turn to my page here on page 16 in your Oh Happy Day book. You're going to see the written piecing instructions. So what you need to do is you are going to take your cream squares, gray rectangle. Oh my goodness, you can't see that at all. Let me budge that down. There we go. And then you are going to larger cream square, more gray rectangles, and there we go. My goodness, let me get these lined up here. This is probably making some of you guys a little crazy having it so off center, off center, crooked. That's a little bit better. That gives you at least an idea of how we're going to sew this together. So we'll sew together our top row, middle row, bottom row, and we're going to press everything towards the darker fabric. So towards the center, away from the center, and then towards the center. And then you'll sew your rows together, and you are going to press those final two seams towards the center here. I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I will get that sewn, and then I will show you our next step. And here we are, our cute little uneven nine patch block is finished. On page 16 of the Oh Happy Day book, you can see the measurement that your center block will measure once you have it sewn together. The next step that we want to do is to add our triangles around the perimeter of the block. The easiest way to do this is to finger press your centers and then use those marked pressing lines to line up your triangles. I've gone ahead and done that. You can see that I have little creases here, but you would just fold your block in half and then just finger press right there and then do the same thing the other direction. Finger press, finger press, and that gives you those crease marks. And then do the same thing for those triangles. So you just fold those in half and then finger press 
the center for all of the triangles. These will get added to the outside edges here, and then you can see how easy it is to line those up. You'll just line up your crease marks. Triangles can sometimes be a little bit tricky to know exactly where to line those up since they will overhang a square block. By having those crease marks, we just line up those crease marks and sew together where those crease marks line up. So you'll do that um, on opposite sides first. You can press these seams towards the background fabric. Um, if you were making a bunch of blocks, like in the quilt behind me, it would work best to press those open as the book would tell you to do. But since we need just the one block, you can press those away. That is towards the lighter fabric. That's also the way the seams are going to want to lay naturally. So that's how I'm going to press towards that background fabric. Um, and then I will show you how that looks once I have those sewn together. And here is our almost completed best loved block. We still need to trim this to 12 and a half inches square. I'm going to show you the back of the block first. You can see how the pressing works on everything. When I sewed the triangles on, I sewed opposite corners on first, pressed away, then the remaining two corners pressed away. And that's how the back is going to look after the block has been completely sewn together. But then we do need to trim this square yet. You see if I have my rotary cutter hanging around here, and I sure don't, here we go, tucked back behind. So I love using a 60 millimeter for just about everything. So that's what I'm gonna trim with. And I do not buy all of the rulers that you can buy. I have some very certain ones that I use a lot. Um, one that I would really suggest every quilter have as one of their rulers would be a 12 and a half inch square ruler. We square a lot of blocks up to 12 and a half inches square, so it's one that you're going to use a lot. Now, I would not necessarily recommend this brand of ruler. This was one of the first rulers I probably bought, and it doesn't have the markings that I would prefer for squaring up. I really like a ruler that has both diagonals so you can easily find the center. And it's nice if these lines run all the way across. So this wouldn't necessarily be my pick of ruler for squaring everything up. I do have this Creative Grids. Let me move this one out of the way. That the markings are nice on but it's a 14 and a half inch square ruler. And when I am trimming things down, I really prefer the ruler to be exactly the size I need it to be. So you can see how nice the markings are on a ruler like this. I can line up with my seams running across vertically and then from corner to corner. This is a neat ruler because you can line it up and then it has these little holes that you could mark exactly where you need to cut for any number of sizes remove that and then just go back through and cut. But really, I just use this if I'm trimming 14 and a half inches square. So I don't take advantage of it as much as I could, but the markings on it are very nice. And this is more what I would look for in a 12 and a half inch square sized ruler if I was purchasing that size for the first time. As I said, I really like having the exact size that I need for trimming blocks down because it makes it so handy. So I can Put my ruler on here, get it where I want it. Okay, you just have to excuse my head in your shot as I look at those two top corners. I think I'm happy with that. And then I'm just gonna trim this all up here. It's not gonna be a lot of trimming to do. My sleeves are a little long here. I'm gonna budge him back over. Actually, I'm gonna take my sweater completely off because that is not working out for me. I don't really sew in a sweater. I'm more of a t-shirt kind of sewist, so that's gonna work out better. And I would not necessarily recommend you come towards yourself like I'm doing right there, especially if you are a new quilter, but I do a lot of trimming. I've been making quilts for about 20 years, so I go that direction a lot, but I don't recommend you go that direction, especially if you're a new sewer. And that's what your block is going to look like once it has been trimmed. So you can see how cute that is. And that's block number four. So 
I hope you have enjoyed sewing up your block or if you haven't quite gotten it sewn together yet that you have a good time sewing this one. It is an easy one to sew. Um, let me go grab my other blocks. I have to think where I have them. Oh, they're tucked right beside me here. Let me grab them and show all of the blocks that we've made so far. I have a little cart just off camera that you guys can't see where I have my other blocks. Um, and tell me which one has been your favorite. So block number one was the Generations of Love block. And after that, we made the Friends Forever, Friends Forever block. Last week's block was the Oh Happy Day block. And then today we have the Best Loved block. So I'm curious which one has been your favorite so far, or after you've made today's block, which one is your favorite of these first four blocks that we've made? Um, it's been a lot of fun sewing along with you guys, and it's been fun, it's been fun seeing your blocks getting made as well. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, feel free to leave that for me in the comments below, and I will catch you next time.